In a high-tech lab, scientists stared at a genetic sequence that had been hidden for over 3,000 years. They were analyzing the DNA of Egypt's most famous ruler, King Tutankhamun. And Tutankhamun's tomb is like opening up his attic and being able to see inside his past life. What they were looking for was the truth behind his mysterious demise and his fragile health. But what they found was a family secret so unbelievable, it sent shockwaves through the world of archaeology. The boy king's ancestry was not what it seemed, and the truth, once revealed, would explain not only his tragic life, but the downfall of his entire dynasty. The boy king's lost treasure. Buried beneath the rubble of workers' huts from a later dynasty, his team found a hidden staircase descending into the earth. At the bottom was a sealed door. The thing nobody tells you is how close they came to missing it entirely. After chipping a small hole in the doorway, Carter held up a candle and peered into the darkness. Lord Carnarvon, waiting anxiously behind him, asked, Can you see anything? Carter's reply became legendary. Yes, wonderful things. The tomb, designated KV-62, was almost perfectly intact, a time capsule from over 3,300 years ago. It was packed to the ceiling with treasures beyond imagination. There were golden chariots, intricate furniture, statues of gods and guardians, and chests filled with jewelry. More than 5,000 artifacts were crammed into just four small rooms, a collection so vast it would take Carter an entire decade to catalog everything but the most iconic discovery of all lay in the burial chamber. Inside a series of nested golden shrines and a stone sarcophagus was the mummy of the king himself, his face covered by a magnificent death mask. Forged from over 22 pounds of solid gold and inlaid with brilliant blue lapis lazuli and other precious stones, the mask became an instant global icon. It was the face of ancient Egypt. The discovery created a worldwide sensation Newspapers ran breathless headlines, and people became crazy about King Tut. But with the fame came a darker legend, the Curse of the Pharaohs. When Lord Carnarvon passed away from an infected mosquito bite just a few months after the tomb was opened, rumors spread like wildfire. Many believed that anyone who disturbed the king's rest was doomed. While scientists dismissed the curse, the public's fascination only grew. But amid the glitter of gold and whispers of curses, serious questions emerged. For a pharaoh, Tutankhamun's tomb was surprisingly small, almost like it was a rush job. Why? And who exactly was this young king? His father was the controversial pharaoh Akhenaten, who had thrown Egypt into chaos by abolishing its traditional gods in favor of a single sun deity, the Aten. Tutankhamun had reversed his father's revolution, restoring the old gods and abandoning his birth name, Tutankhaten. But the details of his life especially his family, were murky. Most importantly, how did he come to his end at such a young age? The artifacts in his tomb offered clues about his wealth and beliefs, but the boy behind the mask remained a profound mystery. Scholars would debate these questions for decades, but the answers weren't hidden in the tomb's treasures. They were locked away in a much more secret place, the pharaoh's very own bones, the secrets of his life and lineage were far more shocking than any curse. What really happened to King Tut? From the moment his mummy was unwrapped, the question of how Tutankhamun met his end became one of Egypt's greatest mysteries. The theories were as dramatic as the treasures found in his tomb. For much of the 20th century, the most popular theory was that the boy king was the victim of a sinister plot. When the mummy was first examined by Carter's team in the 1920s, the methods were crude by today's standards. The resins used in mummification had essentially glued the body to its golden coffin, and in the process of removing it, some damage was done. Early x-rays in 1968 revealed loose bone fragments inside his skull, leading many to a shocking conclusion. He was murdered by a blow to the head. It's a story that makes sense. You see, Tutankhamun ruled during a turbulent time. He was a child on the throne, surrounded by powerful and ambitious advisors, like his general Horemheb and the vizier Ai, who would later become Pharaoh himself. What many overlooked 
was that a young king trying to clean up the mess left by his father's religious revolution would have made plenty of enemies. Was he removed from power by those who wanted to seize control? The idea of a palace conspiracy was tantalizing. Another popular theory pointed to a more tragic but equally violent end. Maybe he wasn't a victim of a plot, but of a terrible accident. Some Egyptologists propose that Tutankhamun, a young and active king, perished in a chariot crash. CT scans performed in 2005 appeared to show a severely broken left leg, an injury that could have happened shortly before his passing. The idea of the pharaoh falling in a high-speed hunt, or even in battle, painted a dramatic picture. His tomb was filled with six different chariots, suggesting he was no stranger to them. For years, the debate raged. Was it a treacherous advisor or a tragic accident? But as science became more advanced, it began to peel away the layers of myth. The same 2005 CT scan that showed the broken leg also delivered a major blow to the murder theory. It revealed that the bone fragments in his skull were most likely the result of the mummification process or the damage done by Carter's team. There was no evidence of a blow to the head that occurred while he was alive. But not all things are what they seem. The chariot theory also began to crumble under scrutiny. The scans revealed something else, something far more fundamental about the boy king. He was not the strong, athletic pharaoh many had imagined. The detailed three-dimensional images of his skeleton showed that Tutankhamun was physically frail. He had a club foot, with one of his feet severely turned inward, which would have made walking difficult and painful. In fact, over 130 walking canes and staffs were found in his tomb, not just ceremonial ones, but used ones, showing clear signs of wear. He also suffered from Kohler's disease, a rare and painful bone disorder in his foot. This was not a king who could lead a chariot charge into battle. So, if he wasn't the victim of a plot or an accident, what happened? The evidence now pointed to a body riddled with health problems from birth. His untimely end was likely caused by complications from his broken leg, perhaps a severe infection, made worse by a system already weakened by malaria. But this only opened up an even deeper mystery. Why was he so fragile to begin with? The answer lay hidden in his bloodline, a secret kept for thousands of years. Tut's shocking parentage revealed. With the murder and accident theories largely put to rest, the central mystery of Tutankhamun shifted. It was no longer about how he met his end, but why he was born so frail. The clues pointed to something hereditary, a weakness passed down through his royal bloodline. To solve this puzzle, historians needed to look beyond artifacts and inscriptions. The answer could only be found in the genetic code that was still locked away inside the king's mummified remains. In 2007, a groundbreaking project was launched. For the first time, scientists would use modern DNA analysis to map the family tree of the Amarna dynasty. This was a massive challenge. You see, extracting usable DNA from 3,000-year-old remains is incredibly difficult. The hot Egyptian climate is brutal on genetic material, and the risk of contamination from modern humans who have handled the mummies over the last century is extremely high. The team, led by famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, took bone tissue samples from 11 royal mummies believed to be part of Tut's family, including Tutankhamun himself. They also sampled two unidentified female mummies, known as the Elder Lady and the Younger Lady, who were found in a separate tomb. The goal was to build a reliable genetic family tree and finally answer the questions that had lingered for decades. Who was Tutankhamun's mother? Was it the famous Nefertiti, his father's principal wife? And could genetics explain his numerous health issues? For two years, the team worked in dedicated ancient DNA labs, using state-of-the-art techniques to piece together the fragmented genetic code. The suspense was immense. When the results were finally announced in 2010, they sent a shockwave through the entire world. The science was conclusive. The DNA confirmed that the mummy known as KV-55 was indeed his father, the pharaoh Akhenaten. The elder lady mummy was identified as Queen T, his grandmother. But the most stunning revelation of all was the identity of his mother. She was the mummy known as the younger lady. But here's the unbelievable part. 
The DNA analysis proved that the younger lady was not only Akhenaten's wife, but also his full biological sister. This was the shocking family secret that had been hidden for millennia. Tutankhamun's parents were brother and sister. This single discovery explained everything. The royal family's tradition of close kin unions, meant to preserve the purity of their divine bloodline, had a devastating biological consequence. Tutankhamun was the direct product of this tradition, and he paid the price for it. His clubfoot, his bone disease, his cleft palate, and his generally weak constitution were all classic symptoms found in the children of such unions. He inherited a host of genetic defects that plagued him his entire short life. This wasn't a curse, it was biology. The king who ruled over one of the world's greatest empires was, in reality, a physically compromised young man, whose fate was sealed the moment he was conceived. The truth revealed by his DNA was more dramatic and tragic than any legend. Why the royals risked it all. The revelation that Tutankhamun's parents were siblings was a bombshell, but it also unlocked a much bigger story. It wasn't just about one king. It was about the dangerous tradition that brought an entire dynasty to its knees. For the pharaohs of Egypt's new kingdom, the royal bloodline was everything. They considered themselves descendants of the gods. And to keep that sacred lineage pure, they frequently married within their own family. This wasn't just common. It was a matter of state policy. Fathers married their daughters, and brothers married their sisters. To them, this was not a taboo, but a way to consolidate power and maintain their divine status. You see, a pharaoh marrying his sister was seen as emulating the gods themselves, like Osiris who married his sister Isis. It ensured that the queen was of pure royal blood and that any heir would have an undisputed claim to the throne. But not all things are what they seem. What they didn't understand were the hidden dangers of genetics. Each time a close family union produced a child, the risk of inheriting harmful genetic mutations from both parents increased dramatically. Over generations, these genetic defects accumulated, creating a ticking time bomb within the royal family. Tutankhamun was the explosion. His fragile body was a living testament to the price of his family's traditions. His health problems were not just his own, they were the inherited burden of his ancestors. What many overlooked is that this genetic decline also explains the tragic end of his own line. In his tomb, archaeologists found two small coffins containing the mummified remains of two premature baby girls. DNA analysis confirmed they were Tutankhamun's daughters. Neither survived, likely due to lethal genetic abnormalities inherited from their closely related parents. Tutankhamun and his wife, Ankhesenamun, were half-siblings, both children of Akhenaten. The story gets even more desperate. After Tutankhamun's passing, the 18th dynasty, one of the most powerful in Egyptian history, effectively collapsed. With no living heir, his young widow Ankhesenamun made a desperate move, writing a letter to the rival Hittite king, begging him to send one of his sons to marry her and become pharaoh of Egypt. She wrote, I am afraid. She was right to be. The Hittite prince was dispatched, but was taken out on his way to Egypt, likely by someone who wanted the throne for themselves. Soon after, Tutankhamun's powerful advisor, I, took the throne, followed by the general Horemheb. The royal line of Akhenaten and Tutankhamun was finished. They were so despised for Akhenaten's religious heresy that later rulers tried to erase them from history, chiseling their names from monuments. This is why Tut's tomb remained hidden for so long. He had been intentionally forgotten. The quest for divine purity had ultimately led to the dynasty's ruin, leaving a legacy of disease and decay. Did the pharaohs understand the devastating price of their traditions, or were they blinded by their quest for divine power? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more secrets from history.